Hello, and Merry Christmas. Welcome to Chapel with the Institute of Lutheran Theology. I am Pastor Christopher Miller. I am pastor of Bethany Lutheran Church in Big Fork, Montana. We have two readings from Scripture today. The first is from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, beginning with verse 11. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to Zechariah, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at the appointed time. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? asked Mary to the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The words of Mary that usually get the most publicity during the Advent season are her proclamation to the angel. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. And it's easy to understand why those would be the words that we would lift up. It is her clear declaration that she is on board, that she is ready to go along with what God is doing. But there's a side effect. There's a side effect to focusing on just those words. We end up looking at the rest of the conversation as Mary the skeptic. We look at her question especially, how will this be since I am a virgin? We hear doubt in her voice. We hear concern in her voice. We believe that she needs some more information, some reassurance about the whole thing. 
But that is not what Mary is doing at all. We can see this if we compare her question to the question of Zechariah. Now, Zechariah is a Levite, and so is his wife Elizabeth. They have not been able to conceive a child, and they are now both near the end of their lives. Zechariah has been chosen for his time of service in the temple. And during that time, he is chosen to burn incense, which is, quite honestly, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And as he burns this incense, the angel appears. The angel makes a proclamation to him that is very similar to the proclamation that Gabriel makes to Mary. The woman who has a condition that makes it unlikely or near impossible for her to have children, will bear a son. And Zechariah's question sounds a lot like Mary's question. He says, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. But there is a difference in the questions. And it is a crucial difference. Zechariah's question is translated in the King James Version as, whereby shall I know this? In other words, how can I know? How can I be sure? Well, you could know it because an angel said it to you as you were burning incense in the temple. It's not hard to find the proof. But this is what doubt sounds like. Doubt sounds like putting a question mark where God has put a period. Doubt seeks to know without a shadow of a doubt. But the crazy thing about doubt is no evidence is ever enough when it comes to doubt. There's always a loophole. There's always a way out. There's always a way back in to doubt and questioning and fear. As much as we seem to want certainty in our lives, we are always seeking for that way back into doubt, especially when it comes to God. In the face of basic, clear proclamations from God about who we are and what he has done for us, we ham and haw. We try to back our way out of it. When we are faced with the law, we try to wriggle our way out, saying things like, no, that's, that's not actually what God meant. And then when we are faced with the gospel, we end up running back to the law. We say, no, I, I know this, this is what you actually want. I, that just sounds far too good to be true. We want to doubt God. And Zechariah is proving this to us. He has a clear proclamation from Gabriel of all the angels. And he still does not know. And so what does Gabriel do in the face of this doubt? He shuts Zechariah up so that Zechariah can't talk himself into more doubt. So thinking about Zechariah's question, the doubt that is in that question, let's look back at Mary's question. Mary's question is different. She says, how will this be? Now, we have looked at that question and thought, you know, Mary is doubting that this is actually going to happen. But it's not actually doubt. That will be part of the question. When you go back to the original language, it is a very basic, clear 
present indicative action. How will this be? Is saying this will be. Mary's question is not doubt. It is faith. She wants more information, sure, just like Zechariah did, but she wants it because she believes that God is going to do what he says he's going to do. It's not just in her declaration of, may your word to me be fulfilled, that faith shows up. Faith shows up in her very question. And that's what we receive when the Holy Spirit comes to us. We receive that faith that God is going to do exactly what he says he's going to do. Doubt is our work, trying to grasp after certainty while running away from it at all costs. Faith is God giving us that certainty. God moves us from how can I know to how will it be? It will be by the power of God causing a virgin to give birth. It will be by the power of God healing those who are unhealable. It will be by the power of God, feeding those who have nothing. It will be by the power of God, sending his son to the cross. It will be by the power of God, raising his son from the dead. It will be by the power of God, joining you to Christ's death and resurrection. It will be by the power of God raising you to eternal life in the person and work of Jesus Christ. It will be. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessings on your day.